So this is the second video with regards to diffusion and right out the bat I want to say that I'm not going to review fixed second law for multiple reasons. I haven't seen it represented in self-control tests, finals, exams, oral exams. I haven't seen it in the lab and I don't really expect it to appear. It is more of a dynamic quantitative representation of diffusion qualities. So I'm not going to really discuss it. So I'm not going to discuss this. That doesn't mean it's, it cannot appear. I'm just not really betting on this being in your exam. <coughs> We're going to talk about the distributional implications of diffusion. This just sounds really complicated. In effect, it's really, really simple. And it was in one of the first self-controls in 2011. So I want to review this. What is the relationship between time and distance in diffusion? And what does diffusion depend on? And these two things, the relationship and the, uh, the, what diffusion depends on are really important. So we'll discuss that. And what I want to start with is the distributional implications. And I already said it just sounds really mathy and really sciencey when in fact it isn't. Let's just say I have an environment and this is my, this is my orange environment. I'm going to put a um, pink substance in it, a pink dye in it. Let's just say a pink dye and a sea of orange dye. I can expect these pink molecules of dye after a while to just diffuse, diffuse out until until what I'm going to get is basically, uh, let's just say, a homogeneous, a homogeneous mixture of the two. I'm just going to get a mix of these two colors where I can expect this to happen. So let's see how it relates as far as distributional. And when we're describing distributions, maybe you remember from biostats, the y-axis is not really labeled with a quantitative physical uh, instrumentation, just say the distribution, blah, blah, blah. So the y-axis doesn't really represent much of anything as far as the x-axis it represents the distance the distance that these these molecules are going when they're being diffused so let's see what happens in time point zero in time point zero what happens is that i just placed my pink dye molecules in the center so they're really they're really bunched together they're at a very constrictive volume and after a while what what can i expect to happen just going to switch colors arbitrarily at another time point, the next time point, I can expect them to diffuse a little bit through the material, to diffuse a little bit and cover, cover a little bit of distance and cover a little bit of distance. And then after another time frame, I can expect, I can expect them to diffuse some more, I expect them to diffuse some more, to diffuse some more and cover even more distance. And then as you can imagine, I can expect them at, at, a, at a later time point to diffuse some more etc etc and basically this is this is a gaussian gaussian distribution or a normal distribution now the question in the exam was something along the lines of filling the blanks as as a material diffuses uh, it resembles a blank normal distribu distribution that gets blank wider that's pretty much it. It was just a fill in the blanks. And this is the entire, this is the whole reason as to why I'm going through this. If I haven't seen it in an exam, I wouldn't really go through it. So this is just something that you now know how to answer. And if you don't really understand statistics yet, not very important to understand that this is a normal distribution that gets wider. That's pretty much it. And we're going to move on and talk about a very important, important idea, which is the time distance relationship in diffusion. Super, super important. And right out the bat, I'm going to highlight this equation here, which you need to know because it's in the minimals. What it says is, it says, how much distance am I covered? Or rather, distance squared, because if I'm covering distance in that direction, and then I'm covering distance in that direction, this could be minus 2 and plus 2, and I'm going to get a 0. So really, what I, what I want to take is, is this and square it instead. And if you haven't realized what I'm talking about, not super important, but this is the square distance I'm traveling via diffusion is dependent on my diffusion coefficient or diffusion constant and how much time did the process take. And this is a one dimensional uh, depiction of the distance diffusion relationship. This is what we're, this is the equation for three dimensions on all axes. 
and this is how you'd quantitatively de describe it. Not very important. It's not in the minimals. Haven't seen it in an exam. And if you understand this, you really understand the idea. And the idea is that let's just say I'm taking my, and this is my mean, the little line on top means the mean distance change or the mean distance traveled. So I can just write here distance, distance traveled distance traveled. And if I look at this, this is really the square root of what's going on here, right? Because I'm taking the square out. So this is basically, this is basically this. And it's not important to remember. I'm just putting this in so you'd realize because this is what's on the presentation. So you know what I'm talking about. This is only the mean distance traveled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the time, at the time that it took it to travel. And this graph is going to help me explain to you this relationship. So let's get started. Well, you can see right away that in very, very short amounts of time, very short amounts of time, I'm getting a whole lot of distance, distance covered, a whole lot of distance covered. And then after a while, the longer it takes me, the, the more time of diffusion, the less distance I'm covering, up to a point that right around here, it doesn't really matter how much time how much time of diffusion I'm undergoing, I'm not really getting much of a distance, if any. I'm not getting much of a distance. And all this graph really comes to say is that for short distances, for short distances, diffusion is awesome. Diffusion is great. Diffusion is quick. Diffusion is quick. And for long distances, for long distances, Diffusion uh, is not very awesome. Diffusion is slow, very slow. So that means that in the molecular or cellular level, diffusion is great. We can use diffusion to put CO2 in and out of cells, but we can't use it to bring uh, CO2 from cells to our lungs. That's too far. That's way, way too far. And that's why we have the blood that circulates, that circulates the O2, brings it close uh, right around within 10 cells apart, up to 10 cells apart from a given cell. It doesn't really matter. The distance is not important. And then O2 is diffused, diffused to cells. And then cells diffuse, diffuse, diffuse CO2. And then CO2 is carried by the blood. So diffusion is for short distances, very short distances, because of this relationship. Or you can think of it as, as, the longer time it takes, or the longer, sorry, the longer the distance is, the longer the diffusion time. So if I have more distance to, to, to diffuse through, it's going to take me more time. Perfect. And this is the relationship, really. What you need to remember from this is this, uh, this equation. And the short distances, it is good. Long distances, very slow. And this is the, the explanation for this graph. Perfect. And we're going to finish off by a very intuitive idea. This is going to be very intuitive to you. you, you I, I pr pretty much imagine that you'll be able to understand what does diffusion depend on. Well, diffusion is net transport, net transport of particles, net transport of particles. And obviously, we already said that there is Brownian motion, Brownian motion, Brownian motion that relates to it. Brownian motion is just saying this particle is going to randomly go uh, and collide with other particles and impart his energy and keep on going. And Brownian motion is really is really pretty much uh, propelled by the temperature. So the colder my substance is, the less motion it's going to have, or very hot, it's going to have a lot of motion. It's going to be bouncing around. And now that we know that Brownian motion has something to do with diffusion, and Brownian motion relates to temperature, really. This is just Boltzmann's constant. Just don't want to leave it out. We know that when the temperature goes up, the diffusion time, diffusion time goes up. And again, I like to use this way to describe it instead of writing it, because this is a good way to remember it for exams. If you know this goes up, line up, line down, instead of writing inversely proportional or linearly proportional, then I'm just going to put it here, linear linear relationship. One goes up, the other goes up. And we need to discuss the form factor. Form factor. Form factor really says, or this is also the form factor uh, denoted by F. You can also maybe 
uh, see it in some website as the friction coefficient. Friction coefficient, really the same, the same thing. And what the friction factor says is, hey guys, I know that you're talking about the net transport of particles, but not all molecules are the same. Some are really, really long, and some are spherical, and spherical molecules may be easier to transport, and some may have very high viscosity, and they're going to resist the flow more, and some may not. So really, the form factor, and form factor is the following, and I don't really think that this is in the minimals. I'm going to show you what's in the minimals in a second. The form factor is 6 times pi times viscosity, and times Let's see, what am I missing? I'm missing radius. So I'm just going to put it here. This is the hydrated radius of the molecule. You don't really need to know what, just radius is enough. <laughs> radius is enough. This is the viscosity. And if you don't know what viscosity is, if you don't know what viscosity is, it is the resistance of a substance to, uh, to flow or resistance of a substance to movement. Uh, and if you want to relate it to something, Oil has higher viscosity than water. Oil resists the flow more, so it's going to flow much more slowly. And pi is just, uh, well, pi is just something tasty to eat. So this is what pi is. So this is what form factor is. And the more radius I have, the bigger my molecule, the more viscous it is, I can expect the diffusion time to take longer because it's going to resist diffusion. So if I have a higher, a higher form factor, not one, a higher form factor, I can expect my diffusion time to decrease. I can expect my diffusion time to decrease because I have maybe a higher, a higher radius across my molecule. Maybe my radius across my molecule is higher or maybe it's very, very, very viscous like oil. And oil is not going to diffuse very well because it's very viscous. And now I'm going to give you the equation. The equation is as follows. D equals K T over F. And this is really, this is also in the minimals, if I'm not mistaken. And this basically says, hey guys, the relationship is as such. If temperature goes up, then diffusion time also, or rather the rate of diffusion, sorry, the rate of diffusion goes up. The time it takes uh, goes down. But basically diffusion is better if I have more temperature. You can think of it like that. And when the form factor goes up, the diffusion rate goes down. In case I said diffusion time, I'm fixing myself. This is diffusion rate. So I can think of it, I can think of it as diffusion rate. The rate of diffusion. It's just a nice way to think of it. Obviously, uh, D is not really the ex explicit diffusion rate, but th these are the relationships you need to know. And in case I did not mention it, it is really important. Did I mention the coefficient? No, the coefficient was mentioned in the last video, so I'm going to mention it now. A very important thing to know, and this is a, a whole other note, a very important thing to know, and it's also in the minimal, about the diffusion coefficient is its units, and its units is meters per second square, because it's the um, amount of matter transported uh, over a cross-section unit time. So it's really important to know the units. And now we know that diffusion rate goes down when the form factor goes up or diffusion rate goes up when the temperature goes up. Hopefully you've also understood this equation rather than just memorize it. And if so, I was happy to help. And I'll see you in the next video.